Good morning and welcome to the uh, Investor Signals Live webinar where we cover ASX investment opportunities in review. The, present, the information presented today is general information advice only and uh, we recommend that uh, any individual reading or listening should discuss with their financial planner or advisor the merits of any recommendation or offer presented in this material for their own specific circumstances and realize that not all investments are appropriate for every individual. Okay, moving straight into a, a uh, graph of the uh, recent opportunity. So up on screen, is the watch list and within the watch list we have a segment here called recent uh, signals or titled recent signals and if we go down select that it loads the list and this is the last seven days of algorithm both uh, long and short signals from within uh, the ASX 200 and the ETFs listed on the ASX. Now you can arrange this watch list either in by percentage term so sorting in either ascending or descending order by clicking on that column you could arrange by way of uh, whether it's a buy or a sell to see those uh, today what we're going to do is just simply pick any stock within this list by clicking on the code takes us into the chart and then we're going to toggle through the recent signals <clears throat> and the way I've set up the webinar for today we're going to look at uh, the uh, recent signals, then we'll go into the model portfolios and review the current stocks within the top 20, the top 50, the top 100 and the ETF models. We're going to look at a new feature in the software where it allows you to uh, filter watch lists for specific groups and an example of that might be if we wanted to only look at iShares as a type of ETF, so how that filtering system works. We're also then going to look at the short opportunities in the market and how we identify them and then we'll conclude the presentation with a review of what I think are the core opportunities, about uh, six to ten stocks that I'd like you to focus on uh, over the next week as potential opportunities in the market. Uh, before we start the uh, recent signals, I'll just jump into a different watch list here which is my custom list and I've just simply loaded in the major global indices so let's just have a quick look at the macro backdrop then we'll look at the recent signals so up on screens a graph of the Nasdaq and we continue to see strength in these US technology companies so Facebook Amazon Netflix Google continue to deliver uh, significant earnings growth now some analysts will are concerned that this is becoming a crowded trade and the PE valuations of these big tech companies are getting stretched but the reality is the momentum continues to move to the upside and even in Friday night session the Nasdaq outperformed relative to the other indices so we've seen a rally there from around 6800 points in the Nasdaq back up to around 75 so the momentum remains bullish there now up on screens the S&P 500 index and after a 10% correction earlier in the year the markets mostly chopped sideways what we're looking at at the moment though is the fact that this high has taken out the high here and we've created a higher low so for the moment we have to sort of recognize that momentum uh, is moving to the upside and it's not until the index really traded back below the low of the middle of last week that you would say that sort of that uh, bullish uh, momentum short term is starting to fade. So when we look at the Dow Jones, similar pattern here, the recent high exceeded the prior high in April and then the low last week uh, was set at a higher low than early May and <coughs> On Friday night, we saw a reasonably strong close in the uh, in the Dow Jones as well. When we look at the short-term momentum indicator, we can see it's making a higher low pattern. So there are just a couple of things we're watching at the moment. And as we go through the recording, we'll talk about, well, what are the opportunities if this rally continues or if this low holds and the momentum builds versus the opportunities that if we start to see this roll over and the market come back down and take out this low. Uh, on to the next one, uh, the XJO. So when we look at this, we had a high of 6150, uh, 6150 points earlier in the year, traded down to a low here of 5700 roughly. We've had a strong rally as 
commodities and oil prices in particular iron ore and oil prices performed strongly and then we've had the retracement so the low here that we're watching is 5964 if the market reverses back down through that i think it's a reason for caution and at the moment we just have to give this the benefit of the doubt that it, it's pushing slightly higher at the, at the short term now interesting the stw is the spider etf on the asx 200 so out of all the major indices that we follow this is the first one that we've seen a sell signal and what the algorithm indicators picked up there is that the indices made lower lows lower highs now that'll be um, breached if you like if we see the index trade back up and take out the high of mid-may but again we're watching to see whether we get a two or three day bounce maybe the issues in Italy maybe the fact that equity valuations from a PE standpoint a stretch we've got um, a potential uh, you know, trade issues that are developing out of policy changes in the US, do these issues weigh on the market to the point where it rolls over below that lower high? And that's something that we're, we're just keeping an eye on and we'll set strategies around uh, the market as that unfolds. This is the NASDAQ. So this is just a beta shares uh, exposure to the NASDAQ 100. The algorithm gave a buy signal back here at $14.50. And the, the ETF's now trading 625. So there's an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. And we looked at the positive momentum occurring there. The IVV is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. The Algo engine gave a buy signal down here at around 336. And it's put on about 10% since then. Okay, now let's go to the opportunities in review. So we look at the signals, click on ASX pick one of them out of the list and start moving through them. Now, the way the algorithm engine has been designed, it's predominantly should be used as a long only system. So you buy when you get the buy signal and you sell when you get the sell signal. However, in certain market structures, meaning that if the macro conditions are supportive for shorting opportunities, you can certainly think about these uh, in the case of maybe shorting the market or shorting a particular stock or using CFDs to go short. So that'll be something that we'll cover in a uh, in a separate section. At the moment, we'll move through these and try to identify opportunities that are of interest. So Simic certainly sits on uh, my watch list. So this is a stock that we've seen correct from $52 down to $41. It pays a dividend, uh, goes ex-dividend, I think, later this week. Um, the stock is very tightly held there's only about 17 percent of the shares on issue oh, the shares uh, that are free trading the rest is held by the spanish parent company uh, simic provides exposure to uh, increasing uh, allocation of capital towards infrastructure and on this pullback i think it's worth uh, keeping an eye on Simic and looking to identify a buying opportunity. For me, the downside risk is maybe $37 in a week market, uh, but it's in all likelihood around where it's trading at the moment, it's pretty close to support. So I've added Simic to my watch list. Uh, not doing it there in that one. Julux Group, worth just keeping an eye on this one. It continues to make higher highs and higher lows. So you can see there I've shuffled a support line under 735. Uh, Domino's Pizza, this is one of the highest shorted stocks in the ASX 200. Um, interesting, Warren Buffett, uh, sorry, um, George Soros uh, has Domino's listed within his top five uh, shorted stocks uh, globally. Um, the fact that the stock is heavily held on the short side uh I think lends itself to a potential short squeeze. And I think that's what we're seeing at the moment. A number of the investment banks have upgraded their price target and their earnings outlook for dominoes. Uh, and that's created what I think is a beginning of a short squeeze. So whilst I'm interested in this on the short side, I'm really looking to see whether it gets a bit more buying pressure that puts pressure on those weak hands that are holding it as a short position and if we see it trade into this sort of 53 to 60 dollar range over the next week or two uh it'll really sort of start to increase uh my interest in that one on the short side uh dexas not doing there at the moment generally as a theme you've seen these yield sensitive names so property infrastructure utility names they've started to rally 
uh, recently as the US bond yields have pulled back, uh, which is just a reflection of the market being less certain on the number of uh, interest rate rises in the pipeline over the course of this year and next year in the US. So these yield names have rallied reasonably hard and I think they're fairly close to resistance again at the moment. We'll have a look at that a little bit further. Um, last week we had a buy signal in the ETF which is the Euro Stocks 50. So keep an eye on that. We're supported around 62.67. Uh, growth point not doing there at present. James Hardy, I think this one has been added into our top 50 model portfolio. So we had the algorithm buy signal on this high low formation uh, and we're looking for maybe James Hardy to trade back up to around 23.50 and we would look to sell covered calls to complement the returns there out of James Hardy. Uh, we like the opportunity here. We recognize the stocks on a fairly high PE but it is delivering strong earnings growth and a little bit of a momentum play in the same way that you would think about maybe aristocrat leisure uh, where some of these stocks on high PEs are continuing to perform well. Running a stop loss below sort of that low there of 2170 is something to have a think about. Um, but but certainly James Hardy goes on to the list there with Simic as stocks that we'll revisit at the end of the recording. Uh, moving through to the next one, uh, this here is just something you can have a think about on the short side. I think motorcycle holdings runs into resistance. I think the stock's in a fairly significant downtrend there. Uh, Metcash, not doing there at present. Uh, Netcom, not doing there, but for clients that are interested in some of the smaller cap stocks, you might just want to keep that one on your watch list with support there at around 113. skipping past a couple here. Now Santos, this certainly uh, drops into the watch list to keep an eye on. So I like Santos. I think the probability of a takeover bid being lifted, obviously Santos rejected the takeover offer at $7 a share. I think the likelihood of seeing a higher offer, maybe $7.25, $7.50 is fairly strong. So this op opportunity to pick Santos up on a discount while oil prices are weakening at present, I think that warrants... Um, uh, Santos sort of being a, a, a stock that you're really keeping a close eye on. Sydney airports, the algorithm's just flagging the lower high formation. So recognising that uh, a rally back failed to take out the prior high, sold off sold off further than the prior low and now it's rallied back and starting to run into some resistance at a lower high. So Santos. So the, the main driver here of so, uh, Sydney airports being a yield sensitive name, uh, what's going to cause Sydney airports to roll over is going to be US uh, interest rates moving higher. So as a benchmark again, you should be keeping an eye on the 10 year treasuries. At the moment, they've pulled back below 3%. If you start to see those push back up, then you'd expect these yield sensitive names to run into selling pressure. Uh, <laughs> Vicinity Centre, so another one of those yield sensitive names. And there we are back to the start of the group. So they're just the recent signals uh, and the ones that stand out to me, Simic uh, and Santos on the long side, uh, probably more than the others. All right, so from here, let's jump into the model portfolio and we'll have a look at how this works. So at the moment, the ASX top 20, so within this list, they're the models that we provide. And clicking on the ASX top 20, you can see the envelope there's grey, which has mean I'm not subscribed to this, uh, to the emails being sent to me when this portfolio is adjusted. If I click on that, it turns green and I'll start to get a separate email letting me know which stocks have been added or removed from the top 20 model. Now, I just have the top 50 and we'll have a look at that in a minute. But so looking at the top 20, this is the least number of stocks that I've seen held in the model portfolios for quite some time. And what that's telling me is for the most part, more than 50% of the stocks within the major indices are actually displaying uh, fairly weak momentum characteristics. So if we have a look at the stocks that are in the model at the moment, so Wes Farmers, 
it was added to the model originally. So after it had gone from a sell condition into a buy condition, West Farmers was added into the model first at that point in time. And since then, we haven't had a sell signal, therefore it remains in the model. Now, West Farmers has tracked within this band of sort of $40 to $45 for the last four years, and it's back at the top end of that range. The market's probably a little more optimistic of Wes Farmers at the moment with them exiting their uh, UK uh, hardware business after that generating a loss in a very short period of time and the prospect of shareholders voting in favour of the company demerging uh, coals from uh, the Wes Farmers business which will uh, leave predominantly coals and then you know when you think of Wes Farmers it's mainly Bunnings as its core asset that will be left behind. So <clears throat> we think Wes Farmers at the top end of the valuation range but may be supported by this corporate action where the two businesses get separated apart. So now by clicking on the arrow we'll move through the next stock within the model portfolio. AMP very oversold. It's the worst performing stock within the top 20 model, but there's no doubt that value is starting to emerge there in AMP. I think in the end, the company gets broken up uh, into really what is a good part of AMP and the bad part. So the good part is their asset management division, probably the area that's most under stress is their advisor network. Uh, but keep an eye on AMP from potential corporate action coming up. Now, BHP, so again, just following the logic, it was in a downtrend here under sell conditions, then it shifted to buy conditions. At this point in time, it was added into the top 20 model. The stocks continue to make higher highs and higher lows. Looking at it from a short-term perspective, we've had the higher low formation there at around 31.70, and we have to give it the benefit of the doubt that it continues to grind higher as long as it stays above that. If you see it reverse back down through there, I think that's probably a reason for caution. Longer term, the way the model works is that will stay in the model portfolio until you actually get a far more bearish structure where it actually rolls over and starts to make lower lows and lower highs and at that point you'll get a sell signal and it'll be removed from the model. Uh, on to the next one, so CBA, so oversold down here at $69 and still sits within our model portfolio. We'll look at the performance of these uh, at the end before I move on to the top 50 model. CSL continues to do well, originally added to the model back here in May. And then Insurance Australia Group added to the model uh, in early 2017 and it's been one of the better performing stocks and from a short-term perspective so we own Insurance Australia Group in client portfolios and we've been selling covered calls we think the stock's close to full value where it is at the moment. Uh, Rio so originally so from the sold condition into the buy condition originally added to the model there at around $61 continues to make sort of the high highs and higher lows. Uh, Westpac uh, as with CBA that's held in the model at the moment Moment, a little bit oversold. Uh, Wes Farmers were covered and they're the eight stocks that sit in the model. So let's just have a quick look at the performance of that. So again, model portfolio, ASX20. So we can look at the performance by looking at the percentage column change here. So the worst performing stock in the model is AMP and the best performing stock in the model if we get that to the top is CSL, which is up 115%. And now these percentage returns add in the accumulated dividends throughout the holding period. And if we want to have a look at what stocks have recently been sold or closed from the model portfolio, we scroll down the page here and under recently closed positions. So we can see ANZ delivered a 1.64% gain uh, and we held it from uh, January through to May. If we go down a little bit further, Transurban, we bought in July last year and we sold it in May, delivered 3.68% return. Woodside Petroleum, we bought middle of last year, delivered 7.7. Uh, South32 has been one of the better performing stocks. We bought that in February last year, sold it for 51% gain. NAB delivered 33% gain. Centre Group delivered 34 Suncorp, you know, we got out of that or the model, the algorithm engine got out of that at a good level there, delivered 8.9% return. Woolworths delivered um, a 20% return, Macquarie 43 and so on. So that gives you an idea of the recent performance 
of the sold signals out of the model portfolio. So again, if you wanted to get those adjustments emailed to you, just make sure you've come into the model portfolio and that envelope is ticked green and then you'll get an email at 3.30 in the afternoon on the day that a stock is either added or removed from that model portfolio. And as you can see, this is not a trading model. These uh, investments are generally held for anywhere from a number of months up to a number of years. So let's move on to the next one and I'll move through these ones fairly quickly. So now we're looking at the ASX top 50. So we come across here, click on the first stock and Aristocrat Leisure. Now they delivered 32% earnings growth in the latest result and the stock rallied from $26 up to $32. This is a real momentum play, uh, but the latest rally from $22 to $30. This captures pretty much where most analysts have Aristocrat from a price target point of view. So it's hard to get excited about it unless we see a more meaningful pullback and another algorithm buy signal. But certainly when you look at the history of the algo signal, you can understand why it's one of the better performing stocks in the model. So let's just uh, start moving through these. Amcor again, so what we're looking at at the moment is the stocks that sit in the top 50 model portfolio. And there's roughly 20 of them at the moment. So meaning 30 stocks out of the top 50 don't make the grade. So Amcor, I think this stock's oversold down here. So we like Amcor. Uh, AMP, we've chatted about that. ASX, we like this name, positive momentum. You can see the algo signals doing a good job there. BHP, we've covered. CBA, we've covered. Computer share, so high or low formation here at around $17. CSL, we've covered that one. Fortescue, I think relative to BHP and uh, Rio, Fortescue looks good value at the moment. Uh, it has been one of the underperforming stocks in the model, but we're gradually starting to see that pick up. And we continue to simply hold these names until such time as we get a bearish structure and a sell signal. Uh, Insurance Australia, we've covered that. Insatec Pivot, I think this is interesting with the sell-off that it's had down to $3.30. And I'd urge you to keep that one on your watch list. I think it's good buying at that level. James Hardy, we've got, we've covered that. Uh, what else we got here? Origin Energy. Now, with oil prices weakening and, and I think coming into the August earnings result for Origin, I think this will provide a good buying opportunity. So again, I urge you to keep this one on your watch list and maybe wait for uh, a... There's a slight price gap down here to $9. It's hard to know sort of, you know, in a weak market, could we see this pull back to $9 possibly? But certainly within this sell-off, I think it provides a buying opportunity there for Origin Energy. Uh, oil search so sits in the model following, again, switch from sell conditions to buy conditions. We can see the higher, high, higher, low structure. So even though oil's weakening at the moment, I think it's still probably an area over the next 12 months that delivers returns for investors. Uh, Qantas is in the model after creating a higher low here. I'll just focus on the one. So Rio, we've covered. Santos, so we looked at this one uh, in the recent signals, but Santos has gone from sell conditions into a buy conditions. It's making higher highs, higher lows, and I urge you to keep that one on your watch list, and I think that's an opportunity that you want to be looking at closely. Treasury wine, so we've had a, a maybe three years, four years of higher high and higher low formations. The algo buy signals have been very accurate during this uptrend. And unless the stock really comes back down and takes out this 1450 level, we continue to uh, think about Treasury as a stock that's moving higher. You could look at running a stop loss below that 1565 level there to protect capital. Uh, Westpac, we've covered. West, Par West Farmers, we have. And there we are back to aristocrat leisure. So that's the top 50 portfolio in review. And again, let's just conclude on this one with looking at some recent closed positions. So ANZ we've looked at. So this includes all the stocks in the top 20 model, as well as obviously the extra 30 stocks that make up the 50 index. So when we look at the performance of a couple of those names that appear in this portfolio that that are not in the top 20. You look at uh, Mervac Group there, which delivered a 17% return. Uh, AGL was a negative return, and that's now been removed from the model. Um, 
Transurban at three percent. So Dexas delivered eighteen percent. Uh, GPT five and a half. Uh, what else we got? So S32, we covered Goodman Group, which was not in the top 20. That delivered 27% return. Uh, Lend Lease, 12%. Sonic, 23%. Uh, SCG, which is Center Group, delivered 34% uh, return. So these model portfolios are a good way for uh, investors to think about managing a uh, process which is a, a sort of removes the human emotion uh, in the decision making and informs you of stocks that are making higher highs and higher lows uh, as, a, 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 as an indication of buying opportunities and then when stocks roll over and make lower lows, lower highs, it removes them from the model. Okay, finishing with uh, the top 100 and we'll move through this quite quickly. So we, let's uh, have a look at the stocks that sit in this portfolio that are not in the others. Uh, so I'll skip through the ones that we've already covered. So Bank of Queensland, a little bit oversold. Blue Scope Steel, so it went from sell conditions into buy signals and it was added to the model. So Blue Scope continues to move higher and uh, analysts have a roughly a $20 price target on Blue Scope. So for momentum traders, uh, you can have a think about Blue Scope with a stop loss below that recent low there. And again, I think about that in the same sort of way that you approach Aristocrat Leisure or Treasury Wines or some of these other uh, high PE momentum names. Um, so Charter Hall, so high, 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 low, the algo signals picking up the formation there and the stocks, one of the better performing uh, REITs within the model portfolio. Simic we've covered, Computer Share we've covered. Uh, Crown Resort. So uh, Crown Resorts has sold off their Macau uh, casino assets and are really now focused on just Australia. The focus of the company has been cutting costs and trying to uh, deliver roughly around 10% earnings growth and part of that's been supported by uh, cost cutting. So the, it's a lean amina a company that's emerging after the sale of the uh, I think the uh, US assets that the company held, which was a property on the strip in Vegas that they were looking to develop a 50-50 joint venture and they sold their interest in it. And then likewise, obviously they've sold their interest in Macau as well. Um, so the focus for Crown is their Melbourne resort, uh, Birdswood over in Perth and the development of the new Barangaroo project in Sydney. So for the moment, the way we're approaching Crown is we own it. We're um, encouraged by the higher low formation and the algorithm buy signal there off 1250. We've gone out and sold covered calls over it to enhance the return, but we continue to like Crown uh, Dulux. So this is one that we looked at from the recent signals. So that's in the uh, model portfolio and it was added after from a sell signal into a buy signal and it's been added there and we're looking at that higher low formation and that was one that I suggested that you'd just keep on your watch list. Fortescue we've covered. Uh, Grain Corps are a recent addition uh, to the model portfolio so switched from sell conditions into a buy signal so we shuffle the support line up there at 750 and whilst this is, hasn't made it on to um, you know sort of my core group of stocks to watch, I think at sort of 750, it's worth just shuffling that support line and having to think about Grain Corp. It pays a dividend in another week as well. Uh, Harvey Norman uh, has been added there, Insurance Australia Group we've covered. Hi. Now this one here, this is, uh, they bought the uh, financial services uh, business off ANZ. Uh, <clears throat> the stock has been under pressure as has all fund managers, whether you look at Perpetual, Platinum, um, Magellan, uh, IOOF, a lot of these fund management companies have been hit uh, very hard over the last uh, two or three months. Now, <clears throat> somewhere between this sort of $8.25 level and $8.85, I think ends up being a good buying opportunity for IFL. Uh, there are synergy cost savings that will come through. Uh, following the acquisition as they merge the business into their existing operations. And I think it's just worth keeping an eye on this one uh, for a potential uh, opportunity down here. Uh, Iluca, so, high, so switched from sell conditions into buy conditions, making higher highs and higher lows, and it's been one of the better performing stocks in the uh, 100 model. Insatech we've covered. JB Hi-Fi has been added into the model. 
James Hardy, we've already covered. Magellan, I spoke about that. Uh, Medibank, so certainly like Medibank. I think that's a defensive income play for opportunities. Now, Northern Star, if we go back, this was originally added into the model back in 2015 where it switched from sell conditions into buy conditions and the momentum's continued to carry the stock higher and even the most recent algo buy signals have supported good entry levels and then we've got a, a signal there in May and uh, already after a few uh, days of trading we're starting to see positive pattern or positive momentum there so for those that um, are interested in some of the gold stocks Northern Star is one to have a think about. Uh, Aurora, so switched from sell conditions into buy conditions and it was added into the model, continues to do well. Origin we've covered, oil search we've covered. Oz Minerals, so again, switched from sell to buy conditions and performing well. And even if you were to shuffle a support line under that most recent low there of 9.59, if you're a short-term trader, you can stay long the stock unless it breaks back below that. Uh, Qantas we've covered. Uh, REA group, so switched from sell conditions to buy signal here at $70, making a bullish structure there. Rio, we've covered. Star Entertainment, so this has been uh, sold off a, a further than the original. So the original Algo buy signal here was around 513. We're now at 490. I think this stock offers a really good buying opportunity coming into the August earnings result. So keep that one on your watch list. Uh, Spark Infrastructure. Uh, Santos we've covered. Now Tabcorp, I think this is one of the key opportunities for investors to think about coming into the August earnings result. This August result will be the first six month period that we've seen Tabcorp combined with Tats Group and I think you'll see some positive commentary out of the company about the integration and the $130 million of cost savings that they expect to generate. I think Tabcorp can probably rally up to around $5 off the back of this upcoming August earnings result. So that's one that uh, I strongly urge for you to add to um, the watch list. Uh, Treasury Wines we've covered, uh, Westpac, Wes Farmers, and back to Aristocrat Leisure. So there, there we've moved through uh, the stocks that make up the 100. Now let's just go to the performance and just pick out a couple of the names that have been closed out recently. Uh, that sit in the 100 model that don't sit in the others that we've reviewed. So IOF, so 52% gain, uh, PDL 3% gain, uh, JHG was 11% gain, ABC 28, SEEK was a 36% gain, car sales was a 37% gain. Uh, again, looking for ones that we haven't already covered in the other models. Uh, Downer EDI, 4% gain. Uh, Illumina, 54% gain. Uh, CWY was 77% gain. ORI, ALQ, Flight Center, uh, Perpetual delivered 16% gain. Uh, Coca-Cola, 4% loss. Uh, and there we go, and, and uh, TPM 200. So the research we've done on these algorithm models, the outperformance mostly came in the top 50 to the top 100 stocks. So that's just something to have a think about when you're looking at the signals. Uh, to finish off on the model portfolio, we'll move through the ETFs. So this list, so there's roughly 150 ETFs listed on the ASX. And let's have a look at the ones that sit in the model. So out of 150 of them, there's only about 30 of them in the model. Now, BBOS goes up in value when the index goes down. So the, uh, when, when the XJO goes down, we've had a buy signal here. So we'll continue to watch that. That's really the only um, inverse ETF that is in the model. So the euro is in the model. Um, so more UBS Morningstar Australian quality. So if you look back, you can see where it switched from sell to buy and it was added into the model here. Um, GGUS, this is a double long US uh, equity ETF. Uh, I'll do it. I'll run a separate webinar on exchange traded 
fun. So I won't spend too much time on these for today and we'll move through these fairly quickly. So uh, iShares, which is Hong Kong, so that's in the model. Uh, S&P 500 is in the model. South Korea it, ETF. So and just know iShares is uh, one of the top ETFs provided by BlackRock. So when you think about ETFs, there's different providers that create these managed funds that you can buy on the ASX. And we'll have a look at how we identify maybe just the ones from iShares uh, in, another, in a further segment in today's presentation. So small ordinary, so that was a great buy signal way back here at $3.40. Um, again, iShares 500, which is the US global consumer staples, healthcare, uh, China. So if you want exposure to large cap Chinese equities, we had this generator buy signal down here at around $58. Uh, Morningstar wide moat, so this gives you exposure to all those uh, global leading uh, companies. Uh, so it, again, it had a buy signal at 52, trading 56. Uh, property ETF on the ASX. Australian banks has been added. Australian resources has been added. Financials is in the model. Gold bullion is in the model. Uh, again, the financial sector. Uh, the top 50 funds. So this just gives you exposure to all 50 stocks on the ASX. So we had an algo buy signal here at around $52. A listed property, we had a buy signal here and that's in, that's in the model. A high dividend yield, so that was added to the model back here. And then yield maximizer, and we'll just skip through these last couple. because So when you think about the model ETF portfolio, what it's doing is giving you exposure to a global picture. Uh, and if you wanted to receive notices of when stocks are either added or removed to the ETF model, again, just make sure that you've ticked that envelope there and it's displaying green and you'll get the email notices of the adjustments. All right, so now we've finished the model portfolio. I'll just uh, share with you uh, how to use the new filtering function and this will only take a moment. So the watch list come across here. Well, let's shift this on to say uh, exchange traded funds. Let's tick this from gray to green. And then if we type in under the name iShares, let's just try that again. So it loads all the ETFs, turn that on to, it's maybe it'll help if I spell it right, iShares. And then what that's done is cut down that ETF watch list to only ETFs that contain the word iShares. And then I could click on that and toggle through those. If I was in say the ASX 50 and I only wanted to see stocks that have sell conditions, I could come across to here, type in sell, hit enter, and then we'll use this as a function for identifying shorting opportunities. And then we'll conclude shortly with a reminder of the stocks to keep on your watch list. So what I've done here is I've selected ASX 50, I've turned on the filter, and I've typed in the word sell over here, and therefore it's now only showing me stocks within the top 50 that actually are in sell conditions. So if I was more inclined to be looking for shorting opportunities in the market, this is a way that I'd go about doing it. So let's click on the first one and let's go through these and we'll just focus on the sell signals and how the stock's behaving uh, following the sell signal. So AGL making lower low, lower high, and it's a yield sensitive name. So if interest rates go higher, AGL will struggle. Uh, ANZ was removed from the model portfolio under this sell condition here at 28, and the stock's certainly moving lower. APA Group pushing higher, but if interest rates in the US jack up, we'll expect this yield sensitive name to run into resistance. AZJ was removed from the model, making lower lows and lower highs. Fair valuation for this stock's probably somewhere more around $4. And I think if we were to look out over, let's say over the course of this year, we see AZJ come down, 
create a low of around $4. And then towards the back half of the year, we'll probably start to see the stock slowly start to make higher, higher and higher low. And part of, I think, the value of this algorithm model is that you have the comfort of knowing that you'll get an email reminder that a higher low pattern is beginning to form. Um, right at the moment, this rally is probably likely to run into resistance or fade, and we'll see it move back down and make a, another low. Uh, Bramble, so we had the sell signal there and the stocks uh, moving lower. Uh, Keltex are originally moving low. I think around this sort of $29 is probably a pretty good level for Keltex. So Dexas under sell conditions, Goodman Group under sell conditions, GPT. So these yield sensitive names at the moment uh, is def definitely the common theme among where we're seeing these sell signals. So Mervac Group, you can see their sell conditions. So as the stock maybe trades back up towards that high, you could have a think about that on the short side. Uh, National Australia Bank, so we had the sell signal there at $30, it's now at $26. Um, Newcrest at the moment, so we're just mindful of the lower high formation there at $22. Uh, Orica, so we had, this was one that I posted on the blog as a short signal, so we had the signal there, the stock rallied higher, and then we looked at the short side of this uh, in CFD accounts and profited from that sell-off there. Uh, QBE, so we had a recent Reminder there that the lower high formation at 1050 off that sell signal. So there's not too many names as we move through these where the sell signal's present just in the last few days. But so, well, let's jump back to Ramsey Healthcare. So this has been a great stock. It grows earnings about 8%, but started to trade on a very high PE multiple and compressed down to about a 1.5% dividend yield. What we're now seeing is the stock readjust. The company's still likely to grow earnings at about 8%, but the market's now bringing it back to a much more reasonable PE valuation. And ultimately, you'll probably find some support on about a 2.5%, 3% dividend yield. Now, a 3% yield would see it at $55. 2.5% yield is where it is at the moment. But I think this one over the course of the next six months ends up bottoming out and creating a reasonable buying opportunity. But for the time being, you can see there that the momentum is still negative with sort of another lower high formation there at $65. South 32, so we're cautious and looking for this to run into resistance below that $4 level. Uh, Centre Group, so with all these property names, we're sort of thinking that um, if we start to see, we had a strong jobs number in the US on Friday night, if we start to see the market getting a bit more aggressive on the interest rate outlook, then these yield sensitive names will run into resistance. Uh, Stockland, so we can see there lower low, lower high. And the algo is just flagging the 435 there. Uh, Sonic Healthcare, so this was removed from the model there at around $25. And we've just flagging that you got the lower high there at $24. So expecting Sonic to run into resistance where it is at the moment. Uh, Suncorp, so we had that as a short signal and uh, was one we commented on the blog and we've been on the short side of that and that was profitable trade. Uh, Sydney Airports, uh, resistance up here at around 750, so they're present algo short signals there. Transurban, short signal at around that $12 level. And then Telstra, so we've had this switch from buy into sell and we've had the algo reminder there of the short signal at 525 and again at around 380. Uh, vicinity centres, so getting close to resistance, so that might be one to keep an eye on within that yield sensitive names. Now Woolworths is under algo sell signals, but I think if we roll forward, we're probably likely to see a buy signal come in at around this $27 level, at which point I would suggest that Woolworths is very good buying. They're growing earnings at about 8 to 10% per annum, and I think they're likely to do that for another maybe two years. Um, the stock is expensive at 22 times earnings. Uh, but at around, on, keep an eye on it. If we see the sell-off back to around 27.50, there it's good buying opportunity. Woodside, so the algo uh, signal there flagging the lower low, lower high formation, and Woodside sold off from 35 back to 32, and there we are back to the beginning. All right. So to conclude today's webinar, which I thank you for being patient and staying on board and listening through the presentation, let's just revisit some of the key uh, stocks 
to keep on your watch list over the next uh, week or two. So Simic Group, I think this is good buying on this sell-off. Um, Santos, I think this is good buying and the expectation here is that uh, we get a higher takeover offer at above seven dollars uh, i think tab corp coming into the upcoming earnings result in august i think you want to be long tab corp uh, coming into that result i think origin on the sell-off in oil prices at the moment you want to look for a buying opportunity here uh, i think the august earnings results better than the market expects i was encouraged by their latest quarterly earnings result which showed revenue grew by a hundred million dollars um, or an additional hundred million dollars on the same time last year so looking for origin to reinstate their dividend and based on that have the stock on about a four percent dividend yield but should support the stock price rallying back above ten dollars uh, one that uh, to have a think about is CYB. So this is the bank that was spun out from NAB. Um, CYB is making a takeover offer for Virgin Money in the UK. Uh, so out of the banking stocks, I think this is the one that's probably got the most upside potential. So you could keep an eye on that with a stop loss below $5. Uh, SGR was one that we covered. I think this is getting oversold. Uh, we're probably moving a little bit further down the list where these are less compelling uh, than, say, Tab Corp or Santos uh, as probably the key opportunities. But I think Star Entertainment, um, do we see it sort of retest this lower 465 in a weak market? Maybe. But again, I would see that as a good buying opportunity. So uh, somewhere between this sort of five dollars and maybe four seventy is the buying opportunity there. Uh, on the short side, the couple that we looked at was just keeping in mind that if the market weakens, so if we get sort of that rollover in the U.S. indices and the XJO fades below that 61.50 high that we looked at, then the BBOS will continue to move higher. So, and it is under an algorithm buy signal there at the moment. So we watch that one. And on the short side, let's just uh, remember Domino Pizzas. So uh, <clears throat> we look for a further short squeeze here. So this is one that if the market uh, is bullish and with the analysts upgrading their earnings, targets or their price targets we could see the short holders of this stock get squeezed and that'll create a, an opportunity for us to have a look at it from the short side thank you for listening in and if you have any questions or stocks that you'd like covered in the next webinar please email me leon at investorsignals.com and the next webinar that we will uh, schedule uh, I think we'll have a look specifically at exchange traded funds. Um, now, if you're not a subscriber to the technology that I presented today, uh, increasingly our company is uh, being encouraged by research that we've done around the model portfolio technology. We're looking to transition our investment approach and products to closer align our decision making around the algorithm models, the performance speaks for itself there. Uh, if you would like to just trial the technology uh, where you can either place the orders yourself or you can talk to us about opening an account and having uh, uh, having us you know, place the orders for you. Um, but starting with the technology subscription, so everything that we ran through today, which is the professional package, uh, we're offering access to that for uh, one year at a discounted rate of $1,320 and that way it gives you an opportunity to assess the value of the three different levels and then make a decision after the first year as to what level you want to subscribe at. But right at the moment up until 30 June, um, the professional level subscription, we're doing a special there for $1,320. So if you would like to take advantage of that and get set up with the same technology that I covered in today's presentation, Again, just email me or call our office on 1300 614 002. And the opportunities in review that we covered today will continue to uh, keep you up to date on those via the morning blog posts. Thanks again for listening in.